are going to have another form of structure that is unlike this structure that will be used for mobile devices and also used for desktop or laptop computers. So you have got three types of uh, structures or you, have, you will have to build three types of structure to make your website responsive. That's the usual way. So in order to tell our browser that you must uh, react or you must respond, that's why you use, we use the word responsive, uh, responsive web design. So we are telling the browser that you must respond to different screen sizes, like you must uh, show, a, show a different a web layout or a different organization when the user is viewing the website suppose in a desktop computer but if the user is viewing the website in a tab then you must show another form of organization or another form of structure when it's uh, because the screen resolution or the screen space is actually changing and if the user views this website in a smaller screen device, which means his uh, he or she is actually viewing this in a smart on a smartphone, then you need to provide another form of structure for this very same page. That's what uh, that's what we call a responsive design. So, in order to make our browser understand these different screen resolutions, we need to prepare the browser, and we we do that by using this metadata. We are telling that the viewport, viewport means the viewing area, which is uh, uh, which is actually excluding this menu and the tab bar, but it's including all these things, the actual page that you are viewing right now, the white section below this uh, URL locator or this uh, URI or this uh, address bar, sorry. So... Um, this viewport needs to change accordingly. So we uh, we provide something like a value for this content attribute. So suppose let's take the example of a list. In a list, you go maybe you are going for a shopping. Maybe you are going to uh, buy stuff for uh, your uh, kids or maybe your parents. Maybe it's their birthday. Maybe it's your parent. Uh, maybe it's your mom's birthday or it's your kid's birthday. So you make a list. In the list, you put the heading birthday shopping. And then you list down all the items like you want to buy a cake, you want to buy um, candles, you, you may even go for buying presents, you may even go for buying a new dress for your uh, daughter maybe. Or maybe you could even buy some new presents for your parents if if it's their birthday. So what we are essentially try what I'm essentially trying to connect is that in this content you get the list, the stuff that you are going to buy, and in this viewport you provide the heading. Now the heading is what we called in our birthday list. Uh, we named it as uh, maybe birthday shopping, and in the content part we actually note down. Or jot down all the list or the items that we are interested in buying like the cake the candles and the other stuff so in the content section first the uh, when the browser is actually viewing or running this page it's going to look into this name part at the very moment of loading your page so when it loads the page it's going to read this viewport and then it's going to go inside this viewport heading and it's going to look at the list so the list says that you must scale the um, website you must make the website responsive so so that uh, you must make the website responsive so that when the browser is shrinking down on a smaller device you must respond Likewise, your um, web page must also shrink uh, according to the screen size, which is uh, we are telling that using this width variable that's the, uh, which is uh, which is being used inside this content sex uh, content attribute. Now we are not going to dig deep down into this uh, responsive stuff because our main focus will be on HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, but we will have a look at how we can make our website responsive at a later section. So um, the next thing that we are going to look at is the author part. Now this is not a really important stuff because you, you will actually 
you won't actually find such description and author but and there was another one that that's quite obsolete right now like let me actually show you content okay so this was used before we even uh, had the opportunity to using this HTML5 templating uh, engine. But the fact is that he still uh, there are some recommendations in using Q this keywords metadata. The reason is that, let me show you one demonstration. Let me increase the size of this browser and let me get back to Google. So suppose I want to buy a car. So the first thing, I want to write down is buy cars. Maybe you are inside. Um, maybe you are uh, you want to buy it online. Maybe you want to buy it near a location. You want to buy a. Uh, you want to find a, a seller who's near your house or near your area. So you search accordingly. But just I, because I want to buy it online, so let me search for buy cars online. So this brings up a multiple. Uh, this brings up several searches and several res results. So the important part in uh, inside this page is when I typed in several words. Now these words are known as keywords. If you hadn't known it, so these keywords there are three basic keywords that Google will look into. One is buy, the second one is cars, and the other one is online. If you even omit this in part, it's not a problem. But the, f uh, the focus will be on these three words. So these three words are the essential part in finding your page. So the reason they used to provide this keyword metadata and is because so that your page could be found quickly by Google's web crawler and they will index your page up ahead of your uh, competitors. So what people used to do is that they used to write cars, buy cars, buy cars online, and maybe they used to say sell cars. Maybe this, Maybe you could actually consider